Let's have a couple of minutes together. How many of us have worked with a apparent problem, which is really same thing, <laughs> hearing it as well, which is of course at that 
level of experience a real problem. It's experienced as a real problem. It isn't, but it's experienced as. And try to understand the truth of it for even decades. I know that was my experience. And failed. We've struggled with some bodily issue of our own or a loved one's or a patient's. Or we've struggled with a money issue of our own or someone else's. Or a home issue. We always have the same issue. We think we can find some harmony and then crash. We have the same issue all over again. How many of us? All of us. Me included. All of us. Now, why? Exactly why is this? And let me say, and you all know it, we cannot continue to to try to understand the truth we've been reading about for decades, we've been pondering for decades, and isn't evidently visible or tangible for us, as us, for all those decades, and expect now for it suddenly to become visible and tangible. In other words, the reason it is not visible and tangible as the harmony of all, or specifically this thing that will not yield from my experience, is because we need to know more truth, more of truth. We can't continue knowing what we know. That's not going to work. More of truth. We have to lift into the unknown in order to find the answer, find the truth. Now, we have to know this. There is no truth of body that we think is body. Period. Nothing we know of body has any truth in it whatsoever. And for as long as we are trying to find the truth of something of the body that we know, we will continue to fail. There is no truth in heart. No truth in liver, no truth in lung, no truth in blood supply, no truth in skeleton, no truth in spinal cord, no truth in anything of the body that we know. And so trying to understand truth and evidence it as some kind of body or body part or body function that we know has to fail. And that is why... For any of us who've been struggling with anything to do with body, why we've failed. There is no truth to dollars whatsoever. The abundance that is truth, God... is not to be found at all in a dollar or in a billion of them. There's no truth at all in dollars. And that is why, as we continue to try and understand truth as what we know as sufficiency, abundance, we fail. The dollars still aren't turning up. We keep thinking that truth known will increase our supply of dollars. Well, who has found that working? (laughs) (laughs) If truth really knew anything of the way it looks through this foggy old mind as a dollar... Do you think when we are trying to understand truth as dollars, it wouldn't open up the heavens and fill our experience with dollars? Of course it would, because truth is love. Truth doesn't give nor withhold. Truth simply is. So if we turn to truth as as we understand abundance, dollars, we'd be flooded with them. 
We'd always have a sufficiency at every step, an over-sufficiency, so that we can share. And we'll hear more about that. We need to hear more about that later. But, you see, if truth knew anything of our concepts of it, we'd be flooded with those concepts, because truth is love. Truth doesn't withhold. Truth doesn't give. Truth already is the wholeness of itself. But the concept we're entertaining of it is what we're short of. That's the only shortage. There's no real shortage of anything. If we turned to truth as love, hoping that the love of our life is going to walk into our life, In other words, a human. We will fail. And how many times have we discovered that that also fails? Now you see, you're not so willing to admit that, are you? (laughs) Every time, yeah. Every single time, our concept of love fails us. Somehow it fails us. It has to. Remember, the Gita... The concept is born and plays a little bit and then subsides. So even if it's been pretty good during its birth and playing, it then subsides, it leaves us. The good that it was leaves us, subsides. All concept is a a temporal, tangible experience at any level of consciousness. And so on and so on. How many times, how many people are praying, how many truth students, how many Christian science, what are we going to call them, not students anymore, but beers, Christian science, or how much of Christian science consciousness, there we go, thank you, is trying to be the truth that Mary Baker Eddy revealed to us regarding world wars, world ravaging, ravaging. How many of us are trying to see the truth or reveal the truth and stop the ravaging or the rape of our world or the the tragedy of war between countries or nations or neighbours? How many? Millions, probably. How many of Joel's um, beers? How many of us over all these years have tried to know the truth and evidence it as world peace or governmental peace. How many? It's probably not one of us that haven't tried because we know it's the truth, but where is that harmony, evident? So, do you see, we have to lift above, which is not lift above Joel, let's keep on repeating this, Not lift above Mary Baker Eddy, you you can't lift above truth, but we lift above our understanding of truth. Our understanding of truth, because we've got it wrong, obviously, if it isn't evident. You catch that? We can't rest, we can't repeat yesterday's, we can't read the same page, unless we're open and we can have revealed to us from that same page, or from that same statement, more of what it really means, because we're misunderstanding by the lack of fruits. It's very simple. By their fruits, we shall know them. By our fruits, we shall know ourselves, our own degree of spiritual consciousness. It's very simple. So, we mustn't look to truth and say, well, where are you? You've abandoned me because you're busy in Egypt. We've got to look at our understanding of truth. And there is the answer to everything. So now look, there is no truth at all of the human sense of body. There is no truth at all in the human sense of of money. There is no truth at all in the human sense of love. There's no truth at all in the human sense of work, companionship, peace, government, country, friendliness, givingness, compassion. No truth at all. So don't expect truth to appear there. It is only, and by the degree we can, the relinquishing of all idea of body that can finally be the transparency of mind 
that reveals truthful body, which is nothing at all to do with a physical sense of body. It is truth revealing truth as truth's body, the one body of truth, of spirit, which then, without concern, as we've heard, without the principle trying to attach itself to or as any concept, then, ironically then, is when we see the wholeness of the concept. But, if we are attached to that concept and hoping to see truth there, or having a sense of needing to see truth there, because I've only got a few days left, we cannot evidence it because there is no truth to be found in that concept of body. Another way of putting this, making it even clearer, is the infinite cannot fit in the finite. Because the infinite is, is indivisible. We either have the whole of the infinite, the whole of God, the whole of truth, or we have none of it, meaning intangible experience. And so we've got to go, there we go, we've got to go to the whole of truth, which doesn't have a physical body in it, it has no finiteness in it, in order to discover the whole of truth as the body that I am, meaning capital I, the body that I am is the one and only body that I is. And that's the whole of infinity being that one body, the truthful body. When I go to that truthful body, without wishing to know it as concept, then ironically I start living that truthful body and experience it conceptually. And it looks like a healing. I have to drop all concern for this sense of body. Same with dollars. There is no truth in dollars at all. If I'm expecting truth to be witnessed as a flourishing business, as more patients or more um, customers or clients, more opportunity opening up, as a winning, oh, if I know truth and then go and do the lottery, I'll win. <laughs> doesn't work. Never will work. There's no truth in the lottery. Nor is there truth in any concept of God as the fullness of all form. The infinity of all form, including, which is correct, including dollars, however, and any other currency, of course, however, if we still are expecting truth to appear in that conceptual form, and now more of it, we will fail. We have to go to truth for truth only. For the experience of spiritual abundance, if you like. Spiritual wholeness. The infinity of spirit being this consciousness that I am already. There is our only abundance. Our only supply. We literally have to be willing to give up the conceptual experience of more dollars, more money. Give it up. Detach from it. Release God. Trust God. All the same thing, really. Trust that the concept is automatic and infallible as long as, interestingly and ironically, we take no thought for it at all. And taking no thought for it means stop looking for it. Stop looking for the increase in the conceptual form that we experience at this level of consciousness. Hmm. Take no thought. Now think, if I had no thought to take... That's how I've got to be. <laughs> so now I can't even think of the concept of dollars. Now I can't hope to have more of that concept. And now I'm also unable to think about witnessing more of that concept. My thought has gone. That's how we've got to be.
Live on spirit. What does it say? Grace is my sufficiency. Now, we've thought, well, I apologise. I used to think. (laughs) The truth is we all used to think, or still do, that that means that grace will be my sufficiency of all concepts. Didn't we? (laughs) Oh, grace is my sufficiency. Okay, come on then, grace, where are the dollars? (laughs) That's what we've thought. In other words, even that statement we're trying to conceptualise. Oh, grace knows something about the conceptual experience, and it'll be the sufficiency of it. No, it will not. Grace can only be itself, because grace is infinite, and therefore only grace exists. Therefore, grace can only witness itself. Grace is my sufficiency. So therefore, now we can apply it to any aspect. Aspects are fine. Don't be frightened of aspects. In fact, they're very necessary. Why? Because conceptually we we have a, a million different aspects of experience. In the absolute truth, of course, there's only one. All is the same substance, the same form, the same presence, the same activity. But we're so used to aspects that we have to understand truth specifically in, in, in at least each of the major aspects of our experience. So, body is different from supply, from money. It's different. So we have to understand that grace is my sufficiency when it comes to body, as opposed to um, abundance. So now, grace as body. Let's do it again. Grace is infinite. Therefore, grace is the only body. If there's a presence, it must be a presence that is of that infinity, because grace is infinity, therefore there's nothing but grace. Yes? All right, so there's a presence here, yes, there's a presence, it feels feels as if there's something here, and that's true, there is something here. Actually, it's just a body of awareness. But that's okay, there's something here. That's true. Okay, therefore, what is it? Grace. Can I understand grace? No. Therefore, I mustn't try to. I can't interpret grace and have it appear as my healthy body, sense of body. I have to let grace be my body. Grace be the sufficiency, the completeness, the wholeness, the perfection of my body. That's not this thing. It is the real body that is grace, because grace is infinite, therefore there's nothing else. There's no other body. This is not a separate body. This is the body that is grace. Grace isn't going to come and do something to this other body. This is the body of grace. Even what is visible. The only visible presence is grace. Is truth. It's just that we're holding on to a poor, a very poor concept of body, or perception of body. So we lift into grace as grace. We relinquish, we drop all idea of body. We're not interested in this thing. We've recognised it now as just a a, a poor concept, so let's discard it. It's not going to die, don't worry. It's going to do the opposite. It's going to be filled with the appearance of life. But, you see, we can't witness that until we realise what the real body is, grace. Until we realise that grace is infinite understanding... This came up earlier. God's understanding is infinite. Think now. God's understanding is infinite. Therefore, this sense of understanding isn't it. You can't. I can't. Jesus can't. Gautama can't understand truth. 
understand spirit, grace. So it's not our understanding that either can do something, can evidence truth, or block it. There isn't any understanding here as this sense of mind. There's no power in this sense that we are. There's nothing here. It's just a poor sense is all. There's one, one power, one understanding, one awareness, one intelligence, and it's being the fullness of its body all the time. It's being the fullness, fullness of its abundance, which is the whole of infinity right here, right now, this very second, all yours, because you are it. Right now it's being it. And it is seeing it. It is being it right now. The infinite understanding that is grace is being it now, is seeing it now. Has it tangibly as itself, as its ownership? Now, these are all very poor words, but you understand. So what is it that is stopping the appearance of perfect body, perfect abundance, and so on? It is simply that we are focused on the concept instead of grace itself. As soon as we turn to grace for the sake of grace alone, then we've tapped into, if you like, we've, we've opened ourselves to the understanding that is in full embodiment of itself as you this very second and eternally. As soon as we've relinquished any understanding that we're trying to have, we have none to have. So give it up. It's only when we die to this world, die daily, we're told, which means die to our understanding. Everything that we can name, die to it daily. Keep on killing it off, relinquishing it. I have overcome the world. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because if that consciousness called Jesus the Christ or Gautama the Buddha or Isaiah the Buddha or Christ, or Elijah the, Elijah the Buddha or Christ, Paul or John, Paul of the Bible or John the Christ or the Buddha, the illumined consciousness, and so many others. If that illumined consciousness walked in here now, would that illumined consciousness be able to evidence, especially perhaps with us, we're open, aren't we? We're not closed to this, we're open. So would that illumined consciousness be able to evidence the absolute perfection of your entire <coughs> life now? Yes. The entirety of your life healed, revealed as truth, now. Yes, it would, would it not? Yes. Now isn't that interesting that that illumined consciousness as a visibility, a physical form in our degree of consciousness has overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Therefore, that illumined consciousness is not thinking of any concept at all. It's not going to sit down with you and say, now what's the problem, my dear? <laughs> Tell me all about the problem. Then we'll see if we can heal it. I have overcome the world. I'm not thinking of one single concept. And yet, that illumined consciousness instantaneously heals, reveals the truth of the entirety 
of your experience. How? For that very reason, it has overcome the world. It's not thinking in terms of the world, meaning the conceptual experience, at all. It doesn't call you up one hour later and says, has it turned up yet? <laughs> it's not there. It's not thinking in those terms. It knows it will show up as concept. Jesus said very often, within the hour, your daughter will be whole. Your son will be whole. Go to the fish's mouth, and there is the gold coin. He knew. It's already there all the time. He knew the concept is already full all the time. The hour is us waking up. When we wake up, there it is. And in illumined consciousness saturating itself as our consciousness, we wake up and there is the presence of fullness, of wholeness. There it is. But he was very wise. He knew that sometimes it takes just an hour, which is meaning to say it will take a few seconds or a few minutes or an hour, or you might have to wait till the next morning before this consciousness is relaxed enough, fully imbued with that beautiful, pure consciousness of the Buddha, the Christ, the illumined consciousness, before you can see it. Within the hour she will be whole. Well, she's whole right now, but now I can see. I have overcome the world. And so, there we are. There's the height of our truth, our principle again. And now, we, who are way down here still, we have to overcome each step of our worldly experience. Overcome it. Realize it is not truth in the way it appears to be. It is not. So let's not try and see truth in untruth. It's impossible. Overcome the world. Don't respond to it. Do not react. Do not engage in it. Don't engage in conversation with it. You're wasting your time. You're just delaying the revelation of truth. Don't talk to humans. <laughs> Who do we talk to? You, Hope. Truth. We talk to each other. We can talk as truth. But you know, I heard... Just, I'm sure, just once or twice. But I heard human conversation going on in the breaks. We're wasting our time if we want to engage in human conversation. It's up to you. You do what you like. But I don't want to. I feel very uncomfortable, actually. I don't, I don't, want, I don't like it. I don't want it. In a minute. But this is one of the great benefits of being together in, in uh, illumined consciousness. We really can be silenced with each other. And we all understand what's happening. Truth is happening as we're silent. Or, if we want to talk, which is okay, then let's talk of truth. Do you think Jesus engaged in the gossip of the day? Of course he didn't. When he spoke, he spoke of truth. And this is how we should be. Let's enjoy the truth of each other, verbally if we wish to. And that's a million times better than talking of anything human. We're speaking at a higher level of consciousness. And then let's be silent with each other, too. I would love it if in that room next door not a word was spoken. And silently, each of us in that room, we knew of each of us in the room, are knowing truth. We're silently knowing the truth of each other. 
And you watch the miracles that take place. You watch the so-called healings that take place just in that consciousness. You know, at lunch, we had beautiful lunch with Laverne. Where are you? Where's she gone? Oh, Laverne. She's such an angel, this one. And um, we, uh, we were just saying, you know, if every... Well, let, let me back up. Do you mind me sharing this, Laverne? Thank you. She was saying that um, uh, her and her husband of some time ago uh, used to have a room in the, ha- in the house that was sacred. No TV, no negative talk, no human talk, no magazines, only truth. She, she loves classical music, so classical music plays, truth is spoken, a silent room of meditation and so on. And we were just saying, if every household in the country were to have that discipline when they walked through the front door and to recognise their home as sacred. No TV, no magazines, no gossip, no humanness, but just beauty, just truth, just silence, or if we're going to speak, let's speak truth. Then I think that in one week, the whole world would change. In one week, can you imagine? Every household of the country, just this country, being truthful for one week, the whole world would change. More accurately, the whole world would be revealed as such a greater degree of the truth it really is. Arguments would stop, wars would stop. Who reminded me of Egypt? You, you were reminding me, Arthur, of what happened in Egypt. What happened? Peacefully, the soldiers, as, as we heard last time, and Brian so gracefully shared last time, last year, here. What happened in Egypt? The soldiers literally refused to fight anymore. I'm putting my guns down, I'm climbing out of the tanks, I'm not doing this anymore. And there is the truth. We'd witnessed that all over the world. If for one week only, I'm sure, one week, every household of the country would just be... In recognition of truth, respect truth, be sacred, have sacred space, have sacred consciousness. For one week, the whole world would change. Disease would just, everyone would be, how many millions of people all over the world are traipsing or being wheeled into hospital for their next checkup? Today, probably every day, how many? I think 80, 90% of it, they'd all get there and say, well, I'm sorry, we've, all ma- we've made a mistake. It just wouldn't exist. It wouldn't. We- How can it exist in the consciousness of truth? It cannot. It isn't there. One week. Now, bear this in mind. What happens if we, for one week, for one week, would be so truthful to truth? What would happen? We'd see miracles. Miracles. And here what's being said, it's being truthful to truth. Not trying to see truth in a concept. Isn't that loud and clear now? We cannot see truth in a concept. There's no principle of flight in an airplane. There's no truth of abundance in a dollar. Or a business, or a practice. Any activity that we can name, there's no abundance of truth there. So stop looking for it there. There's no truth of anything of the body that we know. No truth. I'll share something with you um, that we were discussing recently. And that is with somebody who was having a heart attack. And they were trying to know the truth of heart. Know the untruth of what was happening in experience. And... um, this person emailed, they had to email twice. First time, the appearance was still there. Second time, within hours, there was a complete revealing of perfect function. A healing, we may, may call it in the old days. It's just the revealing, the revelation of truth. And uh, we were talking recently, and this person was trying to understand why they couldn't do it themselves, and yet, when they reached out to just this little grain of illumined consciousness, don't think that I'm some great illumined consciousness, I promise you I'm not, I'm 
if, if there's anything, there's just this tiny little grain, but it is a truthful grain. Please don't think I'm different from you. No way. No way. Um, but this person reached out, and very quickly there was the so-called healing, the revealing. And so the person couldn't understand why um, they couldn't do it on their own, and yet why, as they reached out, it happened. Now, the person said to me, what I was doing was imagining the one universal heart. And therefore, heart was still in consciousness. And there is no truth in heart, whether it's mine or yours or the universe's. Whether there's seven billion hearts on earth, as earth at this moment, or whether we're trying to witness or understand one universal heart. Truth doesn't have a heart. And this person instantaneously got it. This, this beautiful light is very alight and got it instantaneously. And now there cannot be heart problems showing up there again. There is no heart that can have a problem as long as we've lifted above heart. You see now, in the same way, let's take everything that appears as a problem and lift right away from it. As Joel used to say, you cannot solve the problem on the level of the problem. Now, perhaps we haven't understood that properly. Well, here it is. And he knew it. He knew it. He said it. But we didn't understand. And this is what I mean. It's no use carrying on in the current understanding we are entertaining and expect to see more of good. We've got to lift our understanding. All the truth is on every page. All the truth is on every page of Joel's books and talks. All the truth is on every page of Mary Baker Eddy's. All the truth is on every utterance of the, 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 the truth of Buddha's realization and Jesus' realization. All of it's all there. All we need is John 15. I don't even know that we need the whole of John. All we really need is John 15. There it is. All the truth is on every page of Lao Tzu, of the Tao Te Ching. All the truth is on every page of the Dharmapada, the sayings of Buddha. All the truth is in this beautiful Gita, and the Bhagavad Gita as well. The whole truth is on every page of it. It's all here. But do we understand? Do we understand what's being said? That's what we have to continually search for, lift for, seek the kingdom. Seek more of the kingdom. All the time. The kingdom is infinite, so we never stop seeking the kingdom. Don't rest on yesterday's manner. Don't expect yesterday's manner to feed you. It can't. Yesterday's consciousness doesn't work anymore. Realize that. What worked yesterday, now that consciousness has lifted, doesn't work anymore. I've had this experience many, many times doesn't work anymore. So lift completely away from trying to see truth evidenced as anything we can name. And go to truth, for truth, alone, and ask truth, if you like. When it's not It's not dual to do this, as long as we realize it's our very own consciousness that we're reaching into. It's just seeking the kingdom. Show me the truthful body. And you'll discover, if you persist, that there is no truth but grace as body, spirit as body. And the more you're filled with grace, living you. And here we are again, we've arrived back at Basking Ridge. Spirit lives me. Grace lives me. My body is that of grace, living itself as my body. This thing's just a poor image of that real body. Grace is living itself as this body that I'm gifted with. I have the gift of body, the free gift of body. But let me never take ownership and think I know what it is. And then start running around with it, separate from truth. 
like a plastic moulding, you know? Separated myself from the plastic and now I'll run around. It's mine now. No, it's not. Grace is the only body. And so if we want to understand movement, freedom, joy, harmony, what the body is for, what's my body for? Well, it can only be for one thing, and that's sharing, giving. It's a body that allows me to, to give of the infinity of myself. What other truth of body could there be? Infinity just gives. We'll hear more about that. So grace gives of itself all the time to its universe. There's the truth. But I've got to experience that as grace giving, grace being, grace movement, grace freedom of body. Grace lives me as body. And the more I'm aware of that, and the more I'm a transparency to allow grace to continually be felt happening here, continually be felt happening here, or as much as we possibly can make it a continuum. It's not a visitation, or let me get a little bit more of grace and fill myself up like a, uh, an automobile filling itself up at the gas station, then I can drive off and use up that little bit of grace I went and visited. I mean, this is not it. We have to be grace. We can't visit it. There's no storehouse. There's no grace station, like a gas station. Grace is what we are. We have to let grace be. And then, the more we're experiencing the happening of grace, the happening of peace, spirit, as a continuum, the more we experience the concept of body being whole and untouchable now. Nothing, nothing can injure it, can attack it. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. You see, you see, there's nothing to attack, because everything is consciousness, including this physical sense. It's just consciousness. Therefore, listen closely. Therefore, When your consciousness and mine individually is filled as grace instead of physicality, in other words, when attention is focused more and more continually in and on and as grace and more and more experiencing grace happening as this consciousness instead of physicality, then there isn't any physicality left. And therefore nothing of a physical nature can attack it. There's nothing there. Do you see? We still see it. We still have an experience of it. But we we know it's truth now. It's grace. Now we can't be this 100% and we don't need to. A little bit of true grace happening is enough to make you completely immune and invisible to physicality. We shared in in, uh, Tampa that it's like... uh, Who's seen Harry Potter? Oh, that's disgraceful. Only ten of us have seen Harry Potter? Go and have some children, everyone. Go and multiply, and then watch Harry Potter. Harry Potter has an invisibility cloak. You've seen that, some of us? And he puts this invisibility cloak on, and the world can't see him. He moves around completely invisible. Just see through, there's nothing there. And this is what happens, quite literally, when we live as grace, when our consciousness is filled now, as best we can, as truth, as grace. It really is as if we have an invisibility cloak on. Disease cannot find us, we're not there. Bullets cannot hit us, we're not there. Do you see? Nobody can injure us. Nothing can happen to us. And anything that seems to be an injury, even if a body part is missing, what is really missing? Conscious awareness is missing, that's all. There isn't a body part that can be missing, because it's consciousness. Parts grow back, I'm telling you. Or not, doesn't matter, the fullness of life is always there. But parts grow back. 
so many times we've had the experience of the person going off to the hospital and the, 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 the part that was missing is now there. Or the tumour's gone. The part is whole. It, in other words, it doesn't matter whether there's been an injury and it's destroyed something. Or you were born without something. It doesn't matter. Either the fullness of life will be witnessed anyway, or the image will suddenly be there and it wasn't a minute ago or yesterday. But it doesn't matter. I've overcome the world. And there's the secret. There's our message for the moment. Thank you, thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into our channel. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that like button below. It really helps us out. And why not share this video with your friends? Spread the word and help us reach more people. Lastly, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you never miss a new video from us. Thanks for watching and see you next time.